A woman is relaxing at the beach when a man approaches her. He comments on her avatar's high information density and then asks if she wants to join him and his friends in their memory pool. Huh? This is Diva, a virtual world inhabited by humans who uploaded their minds and personalities into it. Think of it like the Matrix, but they no longer have a body to return to. Anyway, she refuses, and before the guy can try to persuade her more, the world starts to glitch. The sky opens to several images, and a voice says his name is Frontier Setter. He talks about how he made a spaceship and invites people to join him as he travels to space. The woman quickly jumps into action by activating her hologram computer. We find out that she is Angela Balzac, a system security officer in charge of making sure hackers aren't able to mess up the servers of D.Va. She's quickly given admin access and can find out that the hacker is using D.Va emergency line, she instantly goes deep into cyberspace to pursue the hacker. However, the hacker manages to avoid her attacks and vanishes before she can catch him. As Angela returns from cyberspace, she gets called by the central system security for a debrief. With a snap, she turns off her computer and changes into her uniform. Wow, costume change and a haircut? During the meeting, the security council members commend her for her performance. But Angela still apologizes as she still let the culprit get away. The council comments on how skilled the hacker is and how he might be one of the Earth Dwellers denied entry into D.Va. Seeing that downloading a better antivirus won't be enough, they decided to search for the hacker on the surface and deal with him there in the real world instead. And they want Angela to do it. She'll have the necessary equipment and resources to complete it. First, she is given a real body to transfer to. Second, an Arhan-powered exoskeleton. And finally, an agent to help her on the ground. He's Zarek Kajiwawa, aka Dingo. She boards a pod and travels to Earth with all her equipment. As she arrives and exits the pod, she immediately expresses her dismay. The air's so dusty, the Earth just doesn't live up to her expectations. There is nothing but an endless desert, a far cry from the vibrant virtual world that she is used to. She takes in her surroundings and spots her guide Dingo, being chased by weird creatures known as sandworms. Trouble already? Sheesh! Nonetheless, she gets into her exoskeleton, a transforming sphere mech, and takes out the sandworms one by one. However, the sheer number of sandworms starts to overwhelm her. The worms start coiling around her mech, hindering its movement. One of the worms tries to break the mech's head, but Dingo shoots it. He instructs Angela to aim for their heads. She gets on the offensive again, flying to the sky and activating her aimbot. She shoots all of the sandworms until none are left. After the battle, Angela confronts Dingo. Why were there so many sandworms following him? Turns out, the guy was luring them on purpose using tin cans. Several large trucks then go to their spot. Dingo quickly introduces himself before offering the sandworm remains to them for an exclusive sale. All you can carry for just 300 nanocarats. Everyone takes him on this offer, which makes Dingo rich and Angela annoyed. He just used her to earn a bit of money. Angela talks about Dingo's price for the mission and says that she will only give it to him once they are finished. He argues saying that there is usually a down payment to establish trust. Angela retorts, saying that he sabotaged her mission by wasting time with his sandworm stunt, and questions him if he even knows the mission. Dingo assures her he knows the mission, but is confused about how she expects him to take down the hacker even when D.Va couldn't do it. Angela tells him that all he needs to do is assist her in locating the hacker. She'll handle the rest. After coming to an understanding, Dingo asks Angela about her mech. She boasts about how it has all of the latest features like aimbot and wall hacks. Not to mention how it's always connected to D.Va. Dingo lets Angela gush about her mech before shooting the antenna at the back, severing its connection, much to her dismay. You're off the grid now, missy. She scolds Dingo and questions his IQ. He explains that since they're up against a hacker, anything that connects online will give away their position, so Angela can't ever connect to D.Va. He asks if they can still use the mech, but Angela tells him it's a live service model and can't work without being connected to the network. With the mech now just a huge piece of scrap metal, Dingo sells it to a nearby junk shop for more funds for their mission. Poor Angela, taking L after L in this mission. Their next destination is a large city called Jed. On their way there, Dingo suggests they camp and head out in the morning, but Angela complains that they would be wasting time and that she doesn't need to sleep since she never gets worn out during a mission. Angela takes the wheel while Dingo gets something to eat and even offers some to her. Angela refuses and even mocks Dingo, saying that nothing on earth could compare to the things she can do in D.Va. The way she says that is so sus. Since they don't have bodies in D.Va, they don't eat, sleep, or drink. They only do so for fun or pleasure instead of survival. They arrive at Jed, which just 
looks like a bunch of rundown buildings jumbled together. Dingo believes that Frontier Setter does business in the city, so he starts to ask around. He meets a man and starts talking to him in a different language. Angela, who can't use Google Translate, gets bored and wanders off while Dingo continues to get information. Three men approach her, ready to fight, but Angela can hold them off. However, this doesn't last for long as her body becomes sluggish, and she gets overwhelmed. Luckily, before they can do anything to her, Dingo comes to her rescue and chases the men away. Later that evening, Dingo tells Angela that she has a fever, which might be because she's not resting properly. He tries to use her equipment, but Angela refuses, saying that it needs to connect to the network and that it might give away their position. Dingo follows her wish and instead cooks her some porridge and has her sleep for the time being. That night, Dingo and Angela have a conversation. She asks Dingo why he's not afraid of her, especially since she represents the next stage of human evolution. Digitized humans, or diva residents, no longer need any kind of sustenance. They're also immortal, thanks to them not having a body that can decay over time. She adds that those who are left on the surface are just doomed to extinction. Especially considering the Earth's horrible state, Dingo doesn't answer her question and simply leaves, saying that she should go back to bed and rest. The next day, the two discuss the motives of Frontier Setter while having a meal. Angela says that he must want to cause chaos, but Dingo thinks differently. Right now, all Frontier Setter has done is hack into D.Va and play a video inviting people who want to join him on a space trip. Angela believes that it's a load of crap. Even if a spaceship was built, it'd be useless. Thanks to D.Va, there is no more need for resources or space since everything is digital. Besides, all space explorations were cancelled even before the apocalypse. Dingo thinks that there is still the possibility that it might be true. After all, D.Va purges anything they deem unimportant from its records. While the two are talking, a man named Lazaro approaches their table. This is the person that Frontier Setter is doing business with. He leads the two to a secure location and shows them a briefcase filled with a very suspicious looking white powder. Dingo notices that the white powder is actually just ammonium nitrate, one of the ingredients for rocket fuel. When they ask how long Lazaro has been selling to Frontier Setter, he replies that they've been doing business even before his great-grandfather was alive. It's basically become a family business for them to sell the powder to Frontier Setter. Armed with new information, Angela and Dingo set out to where Lazaro will meet Frontier Setter. Based on how long they have been selling the powder, Dingo thinks that Frontier Setter might not just be one man but an entire group that has been working even before D.Va was established. Angela climbs up a building and sets up a camera that Dingo can use to scan the area and look for clues. While taking in the surroundings, Dingo spots a sentry bot patrolling the area. He comments on how these bots are even older than the apocalypse. They can only be remotely controlled since automation wasn't that big back then. They see several more robots, and Dingo remarks that the group must be big. Selling just one working bot will have you set for life on the surface. Soon, Lazaro arrives in his truck and gives the briefcase filled with the white powder to one of the robots, putting it on a train for transport. Angela and Dingo turn on the tracker they put on the briefcase earlier and follow it to get to Frontier Setter. Dingo comments on how everything must be remote controlled. If there was a human on the train, they would have checked the case to see if there was a tracker or not. The two are led to a building in ruins with only one robot standing guard. Dingo and Angela try to figure out its purpose from afar. Dingo thinks that it's meant to be the welcome committee, so he walks right in front of it and introduces himself. The robot welcomes him and immediately makes it clear that he means no harm. The robot introduces himself as Frontier Setter, but Dingo wants to speak to him face to face instead through the robot. However, Dingo is shocked to find out that the robot is Frontier Setter. Frontier Setter is actually an AI initially made to manage the construction of the spacecraft Genesis Arc. 44 years later, it gains sentience. And now, 116 years later, he's the sole manager of the Genesis Arc project. The AI leads the two to a telescope for them to see Genesis Arc. At first, Dingo can't see it, but Frontier Setter explains that it's because the ship has built-in camouflage. He switched the telescope to infrared, and Dingo is astounded by what he sees, a large spaceship that is said to be 1,200 meters long and built on Lagrange 1, on the opposite side of D.Va. This is why D.Va never knew of its existence. Angela questions Frontier Setter on why he constructed the large ship. Genesis Arc was meant to search for feasible colony worlds where humans can migrate in the chance of a catastrophic environmental event. Frontier further explains that it was being built at the same time as D.Va. However, it was kept secret. So even when D.Va was completed, he still continued to build it until now. Frontier continues to explain how everything is almost ready. All he has to do is finish the main power source on Earth and then launch it toward the spaceship. Angela asks why he was hacking into D.Va. Frontier Setter answers that he was just trying to invite people who were interested in joining him and meant no harm. Sadly, this invitation was taken as an attack by D.Va personnel which led to their current situation. Dingo and Angela conclude that there is no danger in letting Frontier Setter be and just have him promise that he will never hack D.Va again. The robot agrees
agrees and promises to leave without causing any more trouble. Thinking that the mission is complete, Angela can now return to Diva and report her findings. Sadly, Dingo took out her Arhan and, consequently, her ability to transfer herself back home. Luckily, Frontier Setter can bring her back with the device he used to hack into Diva after a few modifications. While modifying the device to fit Angela, Dingo and Frontier Setter realize that they're both music lovers and even talk about having a jam session together. Angela and Dingo discuss the mission's success and how AI seems to have developed over the past few years. Angela questions Dingo on why he still hasn't been digitized and lives in Diva. It's clear he's already received several offers for it. Dingo says that he doesn't like how Diva operates. We learn that since Diva is basically a large game, it still needs servers and memory for people to enjoy their time. Memory space is limited, so only those that are considered functioning members of society are given a proper amount of memory space, and the rest are locked up in cold storage as zip files. He continues that on the surface, even if you don't do anything, luck can still be on your side. You can continue to survive. But in Diva, the moment you stop working, you are just put into cold storage right away and become a zip file. Dingo doesn't want to live in a semblance of paradise just to be chained to impossible standards. After the modifications have been done, Angela transfers back to Diva and reports her mission to the central security authorities. However, despite her explanation, they don't believe that the AI will not harm them and order Angela to destroy Frontier Setter. Angela declines their order and says she will submit the mission logs to internal affairs and request the Central Council's judgment. The authorities judge her for treason and take away her rights as a citizen and the authority granted to her as an agent, after which, she is incarcerated for an indefinite amount of time. Back on Earth, an alarm informs Frontier Setter that their location is no longer secure. Several agents are coming to destroy him and Angela has been detained and turned into a zip file. With this, Frontier Setter decides to start his preparation for his launch and hacks into Diva again to rescue Angela. He broadcasts his message one last time, both as an invitation and as a distraction so that he can save Angela without being detected. Before they return to the surface, they travel to Diva's hardware storage facility. Angela decides to take the Arhan's latest model and all its additional weapons. She's done messing around. During their descent to the surface, Diva security starts attacking them, but thanks to the new Arhan and its weapons, Angela can make quick work of them until they can properly land. Back on the surface, Dingo brings Angela her body which he transfers to. After, they prepare to defend the ship until it can launch and connect to the Ark. Angela, with her new Arhan, Dingo, with his weapons and traps, and even Frontier Setter, with his army of robots, can hold the Diva forces back. During their battle, Frontier Setter informs them that nobody accepted his invitation, but he'll still carry on with the launch. He feels it is his reason for existing. Frontier asked Angela if maybe she would like to join him instead, especially since she is no longer connected to Diva. Angela declines, saying that she wants to learn more about the Earth. Additionally, Dingo makes it clear to Frontier Setter that he is no longer just a simple AI, but a child of humanity. Dingo explains that only a human can feel the need to find purpose, enjoy music, and even try to have a jam session with others. Frontier Setter accepts the title and says goodbye to Angela and Dingo. With that, he transfers himself into the rocket as it launches to orbit, going to the Ark. And for some reason, the remaining Diva forces just forget about them and stop attacking. Like, for real, they just left them there. With the battle finally over and Frontier Setter setting off to find new worlds, Angela and Dingo talk about how difficult it's gonna be now since both of them will no longer have Diva's help. Hey, they can just sell the robots from earlier. A quasi-human gets to know what humanity truly is through a layabout guy and an AI of all things. Now, Angela can explore more of this new world she's in and maybe be fully human, not just in form, but in the heart. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.